Thank you, Jesus. Father, we appreciate you. It is your grace and your mercies that have preserved our lives up till this present moment. I welcome you all to today's broadcast. It's a privilege and an honor to stand before you to share the word of the Lord. And I thank the Lord for the privilege. Amen. Um, today, I'm going to be sharing with us something that has been in line with what we have been studying since the beginning of this month. We are in the month, or our, our, should I say we are in the season of our unspeakable joy. God Almighty is busy with us so that our joy can be full and remain with us throughout our lives. So today I'll be sharing with us what I call the peace and the joy of the favorite of God. The joy and the peace of the favorite of God. When you are a favorite of God, God will do every and anything for you. When you are a favorite of God, God looks out for you. He delivers you. He fights for you. He makes you to ride in the high place. No matter the storms, no matter the challenges that is confronting you, when you are a favorite of God, God ensures that you go through it successfully. Nothing can shake or move you. Why? Because you are confident that the one who has called you is right there beside you. And this does not only have to do with whether you're a pastor, you're a man of God or anything. This has got to do with you accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and walking with the Lord and trusting him. Amen. Let's just bow down our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you. Bless your name. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor to hear and share your word today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us that we know and that we do not know about. Father, we pray you show us mercy in every falling short of your glory. Father, Lord, I pray that as we look into your word, let the entrance of your word, let it give life unto us, and let it give understanding to each and every one of us that will be hearing and listening today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that that you will speak through me to us today, that I will not speak the enticing words of men, but I will speak, all oh of that that you want us to hear today, that at the end, oh Lord, our joy will be full and testimonies will abound to your glory and to the shame of the devil. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody say, Amen. The peace and the joy of the favorite of God. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 from verses 4 to 7. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, and it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The favorite ones are they who have been set apart. Sanctified people are ones who live their lives of peace. They are the ones that live a life of peace. A child of God, a genuine child of God, who loves the Lord, who loves to please the Lord. They live in peace. Why? Because the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding dwells securely in their hearts. They have nothing to fear and are loved by God. Therefore, their future is secure in Christ. There is a peace that comes to them who are loved by God. The ones who do the things that please him. When you are a child of God, when you love the Lord, when you trust him, when all that you strive to do is to please God, God himself will be happy with you. He will ensure that you have peace all the time. He will ensure that your joy is full. He will ensure that you live in unspeakable joy. There's a huge difference between joy and happiness. Joy is from God. You have joy in your heart. No matter the circumstances or challenges that is confronting you, you have joy. But when you're happy, happiness is circumstantial. There are things that happen, situations that come your way that makes you happy. If those things are not in place, you're sad. That is the difference between joy and happiness. Joy, no matter what it is, you have joy in your heart. You may not have money in your pocket. You may be going through challenges, but you have joy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. But when you're happy, it shows something you've been expecting has come to you. If that thing has not come then you are not happy. Amen. Let us know this, that God's joy 
God's peace is all that we need. With the way things are in the world that we are living today, we need the peace of God. We need the peace of God. We are living in turbulent times. It is only the peace of God that is our strength, that can take us through all the challenges, that can take us through all the situations and things that are happening in the world today. Hallelujah. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. God releases a special and unique kind of peace into the hearts of those who are sanctified. Who are those that are sanctified? The sanctified people are the ones that live the life of peace. Amen. This peace without comparison puts their hearts to rest, even when they pass through life's worst storms. God gives this peace to all his favorites, they that accept him as their Lord and personal Savior and follow only him. Those people whose plan A to Z is God himself. Anything outside of God, we are not interested. But God's favorites are those of us who do things to please God. Are you God's favorite? Do you live your life to please him? Do you look up to him? Do you believe in him? Do you trust him? People who have, who believe in God and still have a plan B, who say that maybe if God is too slow or God cannot do it, then I can move or do uh, go to plan B. Those are not the ones we're talking about. We're talking about people who all their lives, all they want to do is to do things that will please God, is to go where God wants them to, do, to go, is to do all those things that will make God happy, that will make God's heart glad with them. Praise the name of the Lord. We are in our season of unspeakable joy. And it is only God Almighty, the Father of creations, that can give us that peace and joy that we desire, especially in the times that we are living in. Amen. God gives his, this peace to all his favorites, they that have accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior, the those that follow him, those that trust him, those that believe in him. The sanctified ones are also given joy. Sanctification is something to be joyful about. When you are sanctified, you are joyful, you are peaceful. You are looking for the return of you are looking forward to the return of the Lord. You may find Christians who say sanctification should go hand in hand with gloominess and sadness. No. No, 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 no. Some believe that as a sanctified child of God, that is when you should be gloomy, that is when you should not smile, that's why you should be frowning, that's why you should be living a life as if the world has suddenly collapsed on you. No, 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 no. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Gloominess and sadness has nothing at all to do with sanctification. This is a gross misrepresentation of this glorious experience. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 says, and it says, we should rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Praise the name of the Lord. We must learn to rejoice. Those that are sanctified, those that have experienced this glorious experience that we call sanctification, they continue to rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4 verse 4 says that you should continue to rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because according to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, your heavenly husband is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His joy is our strength. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He never changes. What he has said he will do. What God cannot do does not even exist. When God has said it, he brings it to pass. And when he says his joy is our strength, we should trust in that word. And I tell you, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. To live a sanctified life requires us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, there is nothing we can do to please the Father. When Jesus Christ was leaving the earth, he said, I will send you another comforter that will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit is our teacher, is our counselor, is the one that interprets the heart and the mind of God to us. He lets us know what God's will for our lives is. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot please God. Because the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. He's the power behind the church. The Holy Spirit is the power that Christ has given us to move the church forward after he departed the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. We need 
with the Holy Spirit. Anyone that is sanctified, that person is filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides that person. The Holy Spirit directs you. The Holy Spirit shows you the way. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things. The Holy Spirit reveals the will and the mind of the Father to you. Hallelujah. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 9, let's open our Bibles to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. It is very, very important that we know the word of God because without the word of God, the word of God is the manual of God for our lives. It's the manufacturer's mind for us. And God is our maker. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 9. Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 9, and it says, for, be, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that it that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of this. If you do not have the Holy Spirit in you, you, are, you don't belong to the Lord. You don't belong to the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. God's standard for sanctification requires a heart that agrees with the Holy Spirit. As long as your mind is on carnal things on earth and gives them a greater place in your life, you will not be able to mind the things of the Spirit. The Bible says, as we read in the book of Romans chapter 8, it says that a carnal mind cannot please God. Because the carnal mind will mind the carnal things, will mind the things of the world, will mind what is happening around. But to be spiritually minded means that you are not in any way aligned with the flesh. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to be spiritually minded. We need to be spirit filled. We need to allow the spirit of the Lord to take us to that place of sanctification where we can commune with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the mind of God for our life. Praise the name of the Lord. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot experience peace. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be experience joy as promised us by the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to be spiritually minded. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to have his full power in our lives. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives. We need to let our spirit man that is controlled by the Holy Spirit to be in operation, to be in high esteem in our lives so that we do not get controlled by the flesh. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, you will struggle to live a sanctified life. Once you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, there is going to be a struggle, it's going to be a battle for you to live a life that will please God. Praise the name of the Lord. Without the Holy Spirit, sanctification is impossible. We need the Holy Spirit to experience the peace and the joy that God has promised to his favorites. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be a favorite of God. And that means you cannot enjoy the peace and the joy that the favorite of the Lord en enjoys. As we see in the, in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. If you have not received the Holy Spirit today, you need to experience that baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It is very, very important that we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because when we speak in tongues, we are speaking mysteries that even the devil himself cannot eavesdrop. He cannot hear. And when we speak in, the, when, we, when we pray in the Spirit, when we pray in tongues, you are praying mysteries. You are praying the unknown. You are praying away danger that you do not even know is about to happen. When you pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying the mind of God for your life. The Holy Spirit is praying out those things that maybe the devil has planned and you are not aware of. But as you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are countering it. You are destroying the works of the enemy. And that is why when you begin to speak in tongues, the devil starts to get a shaking fit. When you begin to speak in tongues, the chorus of hell begin to tremble and to run away from you. Because when you speak in tongues, fire literally is coming out of your mouth. If only God can open your eyes to see what happens when you speak in tongues, you will never want to stop praying in the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So today, my brothers and my sisters, if you have not had that experience of speaking in tongues or being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need to get it right now and how do you get the power of the holy spirit to come upon you first and foremost you need to be saved you need to be, to be born again because if you do not know christ you cannot be one of these 
And once you are born again, you are, you are spirit filled, you are reading your Bible, you are, you are fellowshipping with the brethren, you love the Lord, but you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need to get that experience today. You need to cry out to the Lord, pray, worship God. And call upon him that he should fill you to overflowing. Or you talk to your pastor to lay hands upon you to pray with you so that you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will enjoy and love to pray. You will enjoy and love to worship God. You will enjoy and love to praise God. Because as you keep praying in the Spirit, you can never run out of what to pray about. That is why you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So that when you are praying, you are praying in the Spirit. You don't get tired. In fact, when you start to pray in tongues, you don't even know how many hours have gone by because the Holy Spirit is the one praying to you. It will energize you. It will empower you. Praise the name of the Lord. So today, you need the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to fill you afresh with His Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit in you that frees you from the bondage of the flesh and that enables you to live a Spirit-filled life, that enables you to enjoy the peace and the joy that only God Himself can give. Today, my brothers and sisters, I am enjoining you. If you want to enjoy that peace and joy that God gives to His favorites, and you have not yet given your life to Christ. You have not even started. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross of Calvary so that you and I can be saved. So my brothers and my sisters, no matter what your sin is, no matter how much of a sin you have committed, do not listen to that voice that is telling you your sins are so great that God cannot forgive you. There is no sin that God cannot forgive except the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So today, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to walk in that root of the Holy Spirit, you want to be a friend of God, you want God to know you, you want the Holy Spirit to recognize you and feel you, I want you to say after me today, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today, just the way I am. Have mercy upon me. Wash me thoroughly with your blood. I acknowledge my sin, Lord. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Devil, I renounce you. You are no longer my master. From today, I belong to the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for writing my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you, my brothers and my sisters. Lord, Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are giving their lives to you. Lord, I pray that you will hold their hands and help them to walk through this journey that they've started in the name of Jesus. Give them the grace, oh Lord, that as they put their hands on the plow, they will not look back. But from today, oh God, they will continue to serve you and to live that life that you have ordained for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I welcome you into the kingdom of God. The Bible says there is joy in heaven for every sinner that repents, and I can tell you that the host of heaven are rejoicing, are dancing now because you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark today down. Today is your new birthday, and I tell you, as you continue to walk with the Lord, to study the Bible, to go to church, to serve God, your life will never remain the same again. Whatever may be the challenges that is confronting you, as you have become a child of God today, hand them over unto the Lord. The Bible says, Jesus Christ said in his word, he said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, for my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Congratulations, my brothers and sisters. If you need any help, you know, with this work that you've begun today, you want to know how to study the Bible, you want someone to pray with you, to counsel you, or to, to just to hold your hands through this journey. I want you to check out our numbers that are scrolling on the screen. Just call any of those numbers or WhatsApp or check our email or visit our website and we'll be ever too glad just to walk this journey with you. Amen. Today, my brothers and sisters, I want you to ask God to let his peace and unquenchable joy to flood your heart. Ask him to turn the hearts of all the people in your family that have not known him. Tell him to turn their hearts to him so that all of us will enjoy the peace and the joy that only God's favorite have enjoyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to open your mouth now and begin to pray and tell the Lord that, Lord, let your peace and unquenchable joy and joy unspeakable flood my heart, flood the heart of my loved ones in 
the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lira to suponde babo sharara bakase terere bosunto rakata ladidi bosunto roro bosikayata. Lord, let your joy, your peace, O Lord, let it begin to flood my heart and the heart of my loved ones. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray today for all my family members, O Lord, that have not known you and the people, my neighbors, my colleagues that have not known you. That Lord, you will save them, O God. You will break off the yoke of the devil from off their necks, O God. In the name of Jesus, give them a heart that is thirsty after you. In the mighty name of Jesus, that in this turbulent times that we are living, in this challenging times that we are living, Lord, let your joy, let your peace, O God, let it flood our hearts, O God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, because it is done in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. I want you to continue to pray after this telecast, and I want you to know that as you continue to pray, as you continue to seek the face of the Lord, the joy and the peace of God that only Him can give will dwell in your heart and will give you that joy in the name of Jesus. If you want to give your offerings, it's time to give our offerings. If you want to give your offerings to this uh, ministry, I want you to. Uh, Go to our website or check out the banking details that are scrolling on the screen. You can decide if you are living in South Africa where we are. The, the, the banking details are there. You can send your offering or you are in Nigeria or West Africa. You can also give your offering. If you are in any part of the other part of the world, you can check our website and follow. go to uh, uh, partner with us or give your offering and you follow the prompt. And as you do so, I want to assure you that the blessings that follow giving will accompany your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, God bless you for listening today and I want you to know that as you have listened today, the blessings of the Lord that pass it all understanding will rest and dwell securely in your hearts in the name of Jesus. Our Father and the Lord have got some very wonderful and powerful books. Um, you can see them on there. There's the uh, King with the Giants of Destruction. That is a very powerful book. It's a deliverance book. It has got, I think, about several or so chapters. I have used those books to pray, to do videos, and I have seen the mighty hand of God move in my life. And there's also the riches of His grace. There's the riches of his grace. I want you to read it and I want you to know that the grace of God is so rich that it will enrich and empower our lives. Also, there is healing in his blood and also there is healing from heaven. As you grab those books and you read them, your life will never remain the same again. And I tell you, a reader is a leader. And when you are informed, you will not be deformed. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to also subscribe to our channel. I want you to share this message with your family members, with your friends, and let them also be blessed. And as you do so, the Lord God Almighty will enrich your life in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today and for sharing with us. And I pray and I trust the Lord that your life will never remain the same again. Until you come your way again next time, stay in the Lord. Trust Him and His joy and unspeakable peace will continue to dwell in your heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. See you next time.